In the previous tutorial, we had set up four different divs. Square divs that had been defined in the actual style sheet, and I had a content class uh, that controlled all four divs, and uh, had a height and width of 150 pixels, put a border on it, floated them all left, and had a margin between them of 20 pixels. And then, for the unique background colors, I had set up four different IDs, uh, first, second, third, and fourth, changed the background colors of each of them, and then, just to see the actual index.html page, uh, I just made sure that I put in the class attribute, setting them all to class content, and then each of the individual divs uh, were following different ID rules in the style sheet. For a run through of what I did in the previous tutorial, just have a look at that. In this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the idea of a wrapper div. Now, what a wrapper div does, it is essentially a little piece of netting or a container that I fit my entire website into. Um, the entire content of my website goes into this wrapper div. And then that div is very easy to manipulate the overall size, the width, the margins, all those other different pra uh, practical uh, rules that control where my overall body of my website is uh, contained and where it's positioned and laid out. So first of all, to actually put in this wrapper div, I'm going to go back into my HTML page and I'm going to put in a div here. I'm also going to set it as an ID equal to wrapper. And remember that this wrapper div takes in the entire content of my website. So I'm going to span over my the rest of all my divs, the rest of all my content, and then I'm going to put in an end div tag. So everything else that's in my website, all the rest of the content is inside this wrapper div because my start uh, div tag is here and my end div tag is there. I've also ID'd it as wrapper, so that means that I can control that wrapper div through my style sheet. For the moment, if I actually go back to my page and I refresh, nothing has happened because I haven't done anything with that wrapper div yet in terms of rules or CSS properties to make it any ways different. But I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go into my style sheet, and because the wrapper div is so important, uh, I'll probably put it up at the top so it's easy to find. And I can just say that this wrapper div, and it's got an ID uh, of wrapper, is the label. And I'm just going to open up that rule section there. And then I'm going to maybe start making width and height adjustments, and probably put in a background color as well, just to make it easy to see. So, background color. And I'm going to set it to a gray. fine and then a width and a height I'll set the width to 510 pixels and I'll set the height to 510 pixels for the moment as well let's take a look at what that does back in my browser so refresh and I can see now the gray div comes in here all of the rest of the body of my website is contained inside that wrapper and so therefore it has to be constrained within it because I was so specific about putting in these absolute values for the width and the height of the wrapper div of 510 pixels by 510 pixels the rest of these different divs they have to fit inside that dimension and so remember that I have the actual div set to 150 pixels it's also got borders of 5 pixels all the way around and also it's got a margin of 20 pixels all the way around. So in actual fact, I've got 20 pixels of a margin here, plus five pixels of a border, plus 150 pixels of the content of the div, and then I've got another five pixels and another 20 pixels here. So that's 20 plus five, plus 150 is 175, plus five is 180, plus 20 is 190. So that whole span across there is 190, I've got another 190 here, which adds up 380. And so therefore, if the browser had tried to actually put in this div in in this section here, there just isn't enough room for it. So it rolls it over onto the next line. If I want this wrapper div and the content divs that are inside it to be a little bit more symmetrical, and go into the actual content class, 
and change the actual margin to something a little bit bigger. So it was uh, 20, uh, just change it to 40 there. Uh, so I'll save that, go back to my browser, refresh, and there it is. So I can space out any of my content divs that are within my wrapper, just keeping in mind the CSS box model and adding up all the different figures. And it's very easy to kind of splay them apart or splay them across an actual uh, wrapper div so that they look well. And once my wrapper div is set up like that, I can go back in and I can just uh, set up different properties to move the whole site into the middle, for example. So if I go margin left auto and margin right auto as well. And refresh, that moves everything into the center and so on and so forth. So it's just a very flexible way to control the main content of my website uh, and manipulate it through CSS rules. So that's a wrapper div.